The okay. NFL is proposing draft this incentives for teams hiring um, minority head coaches. I don't like the word minority, by the way, but I'm just reading it because that's what the article says. When I first heard about this, that the NFL teams would receive incentives for bringing in black coaches, bringing in black front office guys, I initially was against it, right? I thought, you know, it's, it's going to just breed all kinds of nastiness with teams doing this to basically as a as a as a means to an end, right? Like I hire this black guy, I get this draft pick, I hire this black guy, my salary cap goes up, right? But then I thought about where the NFL is in place in, in its standing when it comes to black head coaches, there's only four. When it comes to black GMs, there's only two. There's no black owners. And if you want to talk about like the the issue with black owners and having the equity and having the money to have a team, even if a black owner like a Diddy or a Jay Z or even somebody Hispanic like an A-Rod or a J-Lo wanted to buy a team, the other owners have to approve that. So even if you have the money and you can afford to buy this team and, and pay your players, or even let's say, for example, like Colin Kaepernick got with an ownership group and he wanted to buy a team, you have to be approved by all the other white owners to, to be granted um, admission into this into this club. You know, whether it's going to be a woman buying a team or a black man or Hispanic man buying a team. So I'm with it. That's an interesting perspective. Um, Being with it. And I, and I've, and I've been trying to decide, am I with it or am I not? Uh huh. Um, I think it's disgusting. First of all. Okay. I think I, I truly like, I use that word cause I didn't really like strong that word. That word is disgusting. Um, it's very strong. And I think it's one of those things where it's like, yo, I am, it's sad that in 2020, in order to for an African American to even get a look at one of these positions, there has to be an incentive. Yes. To hire them. That to me is sad. It is sad. The the state of affairs is fucked up. It's like it's sad, up. right? But there are so many companies that get government grants, city grants, state grants for hiring black people, hiring women, putting them in positions of power. But do you want me though? I do you want it, me or do you want to, do you want the benefits that you get from having me. They want the benefits. That doesn't even have to fucking do with my skills of being a coach. They want the benefits. And this will... this. Will so like, why do I want you? This will ingratiate them to want the benefits, but ultimately, it kind of sets up from what I've, I've read about some of the preliminary um, like procedures in this, in this document. You hire, this, you hire a black coach. You get these draft incentives. You get these money incentives. The black coach is set up for success. Draft picks equal good players. Draft picks equal success. Like getting more money to pay better players equals you can have the possibility of having a better team and being set up to win games and being set up to show your worth of I'm a black coach. Yeah, I got this extra draft pick or I got this extra money to spend on a free agent. But look at me. I'm winning. Look at me. I can do the job. And yes, it sucks. It sucks that we still got to prove ourselves in this arena in 2020 in the NFL or in any real establishment when it comes to it. it's. But when, like I said, when I initially heard it, I was disgusted by it. But the more that I've thought about it, if this is, like, it's, it's an indictment, like Momani Jones said, on the NFL and the state of affairs it's in. Like, we know that. But then, like, we, something has to change, right? There has to be more black head coaches. There has to be more, more black GMs. There Something has to, has to change, man. A black but, owner. I mean, we 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 can get on this because this is this ties into every single other thing that goes into race. It's like a lot of shit has to change. It does, right? yes. I, I like the fact that this is an initiative that will help push the change, but I hate that this is what needs to be done for change to happen because the change is not even a willingness. It's not like, yo. I think Trevor's really intelligent. He knows his X's and O's. He's a great guy in the locker room. I want him part of my organization. It's not that. It's just like, yo, I'll take him because you know what? Out of the pool we got, he's cool, and I also get this draft pick. And it it just sucks that that's the state we're in. Um, I'm happy that the NFL is making more progress towards being more inclusive and culturally diverse. That's dope, but it's sad because it's, look at sports, it's built on the backs of African Americans, which is nuts to me. Yes. It's built on the athleticism of Africa. Like, yeah, they're great white quarterbacks and they're great 
white running backs and they're great white offensive linemen, but there are way more great African Americans in gotta... every other position. And it's just sad to me that yet still being proven, Hall of Famers, X, Y, and Z, winnings, talent, whatever else. It's just sad to me that even after all of that, after all the dancing I've done for you on these strings, that you can't even sit down for an interview and hire me just because of what I bring to the table. Yeah, it's 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 sick. It is. Um, you read? You ever read Forty Million Dollar Slaves? I've not. You got? I got. I got to lend you that. Uh, Forty Million Dollar Slaves by William Roden from the New York Times. I haven't read it in a long time, so um, I don't want to like sit up here and like you know spit it verbatim. But it kind of covers everything you just said, like the value that we bring to sports. And there's only so high that will go, fam. You know it's a, it's a, it's a ceiling, and and that's what's really it's like it's like I I took a little I mentioned LeBron a lot on this podcast, and I'm not a LeBron fan, but like the things that he does or he is doing um, as an African American is putting him in a position where like you you're not talking to him because there's no, an incentive to talk to him. You're talking to him because like. He's proven that he is good in business. He's proven that he's smart. He's proven that he's articulate. He's proven that he has innovative ideas, uninterrupted, a, a platform that we, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, that, we, like, that wasn't given to us before. But it's, it's like, break the shell, break the mold. I hire you because you're great, not because an incentive. And it's sad that that's the case. You can only plead so much to the, the good heartedness of people, but when they don't have good hearts, you need to appeal to tangible things that you know they want that you know that they're going to probably have a more of an open mind for like they initiated the they call the Rooney rule uh where you have to interview uh black candidates if you have a coaching vacancy uh and teams have found ways to circumvent that so they got to put something now they got to put something else in why trip i don't even know why you brought this up as a topic because i'm trying to understand why the hell is that even a thing is what a thing like it's crazy to me that that's a thing. We live in a world where that, like, we live in America. Because the NFL has the NFL has owners, old white rich owners. They have friends. They have networks. They have nepotism. And you have they African have African Americans slinging the ball, running the ball, juking oh, yeah, the ball, know. stopping the ball, that's protecting the ball, filling your seats, filling, giving you so much revenue. And yet still, you're trying to find a loophole into into interviewing and hiring one? Of course, because they want to keep everything in their network. Fuck that, bro. They want the families to stay rich. That's how those... Listen, there, there are owners and billionaires in this world that their first million came from slavery. Their first... There are, like, Germans, their first million came off the backs of Jews. Like, in wartime, in, in poverty time, in tough times, like, the rich get richer. Even during quarantine. like Yo, the, the rich, rich got richer in quarantine. We'll, con- we'll continue to get billionaires. We'll continue to be billionaires and become trillionaires. So they don't want to lose that lineage of, of wealth and fortune. And they damn sure don't want to lose it to, to a black man, to a, a guy that looks like you and I. Bro. So they're going to continue to do everything to... to you know, fortify their network, get their families in, into the into the organization, into their business to make sure that their generational wealth and their generational superiority stays that way. And unfortunately, it comes at the expense of so many qualified black men that could do the job either the same or better than their white counterparts. And that's the way it's been for 400, 500 years. And the only things that have gotten into, gotten into, us into certain places has been like our sheer will and fight to consistently prove that we're good enough and it sucks that we have to consistently prove that we're good enough but you and i both know this we like probably even from our parents like in certain instances like we just gotta work harder man and it sucks like i hate it but it's the way it is it is the way it is shout out to those who want to break the mold shout out to those who are willing to put up with not the test of being great, but just all the bullshit that comes with being accepted and being mm-hmm. viewed as equal. Shout out to the women, shout out to the men, shout out to the African Americans, shout out to the people who are just in positions where they're like, you know what? This is the world we live in, like how you and I said it, but I'm not accepting that for what it is. Yeah. And and the weight of that is way heavier. Way and the burden of that, to carry that burden to be like, you know what? I'm like the African American coach who gets hired in this process. Shout out to him F- to stand up there and, and know that like, hey, I am good enough and I'm here because I'm good enough. 
why they hired me has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. That's a big, that's big. It is huge. That's um, big. But then it also goes into, you know, when it comes to like the hiring practices that people find ways around those interviews. It's like when you do hire a black coach as an owner and as a front office team, do you give him all the resources he needs to win? Do you give him the the money to go out there and get players? Do you give him the you know the autonomy to go out there and like call his own plays if he needs a defensive coordinator? Are you going out there to get him the best defensive or offensive coordinator? It's so layered, it's so nasty. It's layered and it's um, nasty, man. This is real time. Like I just got an ESPN alert uh, that says NFL owners table resolution to incentivize hiring of minority coaches. GMs by improving team draft positioning. So, like, owners don't even want to touch that shit right now. Table it. Table that. So, they're not even. So, it's, it's, priority, it's, it's, fam. So, so, it's to the extent where it's like, even if I'm getting some good shit, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have to be in the position to like hire this guy. 